welcome to another episode of Chatter, a podcast from The Gist. On today's show, we're talking to Daz from Skank FM. Skank FM are one of Belfast's independent radio stations. Daz and I spoke all about how technology has changed the music industry over the time he's been a DJ and a producer, and how they've gone from a garage in West Belfast to their own studio down by the docks. If you like the show, don't forget to like and subscribe to us on Facebook. You can follow us on YouTube. You can share this episode with your friends and find the podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts. So here's Daz. Daz, welcome to the show. Cheers, thank you very much. Nice to have you here. Yeah, good to be here. Yeah, if uh, if anyone hears some tunes in the background, who who was it pumping out? It's uh, DJ Nefo. He's live on air at the minute, so does a Monday night show eight to ten. It's called the B City Sit Down. Play a bit of old school hip hop, bit of funk, bit of soul, bit of everything really. So yeah, it's him in the background. Yeah, well, it's better than our usual either hum from Skype or uh, <laughs> yeah. the background noise yeah. of the people next door. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, yeah, so we're down at, at Skank FM here. Mm-hmm. I didn't, and I I only discovered it about six months ago. Yeah. Uh, when a friend of mine, Mafia, who does some shows for yourselves, yeah. was on, I was talking about it on Facebook. We had a listen, and it was a little bit not of a shock, but to find to find that there's more than just Belfast underground radio going on in in Northern Ireland and in yeah, Belfast yeah. in terms of like independent radio stations. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, when yeah, why don't you give us an idea of how you, how you got started with with Skank FM? Well, I came up in kind of like an old school way, um, collecting vinyl, doing DJ sets on actual turntables, um, and basically me and a collective of other DJs. Um, I've been DJing together about six seven years. Uh, we had seen a shift in the music scene in terms of. All of a sudden, there was now things like Bebo, which turned it eventually into Facebook and your Instagrams and your Twitters nowadays. Club promotion was run different. Uh, and on top of that, we just kind of seen a shift in technology. Clubs naturally changed in Belfast. Um, and we were kind of being told what to play by promoters and managers. And we kind of thought to ourselves, well, what can we do where we can still truly express ourselves as DJs and MCs and producers. So we thought, well, it would be class if we had our own radio station where we controlled what we play and what we say. Um, and effectively, that's what we did. And that's how Skank FM was birthed, just through discussion with DJ DK and K2 from uh, K Crew DJs and myself. And it basically started off as an online radio station um, in a garage in West Belfast, uh, DJ DK's house. Uh, and from there, it just kind of it grew. We actually discovered, hey, we've got listeners. <laughs> and uh, because it was online, people were tuning in from all across the globe. Um, Canada, Australia, America, Europe, all the rest of it. So it was kind of interesting to see that, hang on, there's other heads out there who want to hear this old school hip hop or this underground hip hop or some weird drum and bass or reggae or dub or whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's how the whole thing was birthed, um, and then seven years later, here we are sitting in the studio in the docks, and yeah, we've got a recording studio and a nice booth and a setup for the the radio show as well for all the DJs to come down and yeah, so yeah, it should definitely be an inspiration to anyone who thinks, you know, I could do a much better job myself of doing of running anything. That's how Tarantino started making films. Well, it's, <laughs> it's just kind of that do-it-yourself attitude. But, I mean, like, I'm a diehard hip-hop fan and have been for, for many years now, and um, I suppose that do-it-yourself attitude is a hip-hop attitude. It's like, you don't have beats, go find someone who makes beats or make them yourself. <laughs> you don't have raps, go and write your raps right now. You need more records, well, get your hustle on and go buy some more and start up your your setup and then it was just that constant attitude of wanting to improve and keep it growing and make it bigger and better and that's where we kind of are now so yeah well would you say this was your third studio uh, yeah well we had the studio west belfast where it all kicked off and and then because we were on the the, the scene dj in belfast and 
kind of further afield we, we got to know a lot of DJs and a lot of producers a lot of music heads uh, so they kind of came through to the garage in West Belfast and did shows with us and rock we two our sets here and there um, and then there was a couple of nights before you knew it where there were live shows and then we kind of outgrew the garage and it was my mate's garage at his house at the end of the day so we were like let's try and get a studio so the second studio came along which was uh, Newton Arch Road East Belfast and we're above a pizza shop so we always thank a pizza but we were there regardless making music and doing live radio shows and again it was just all natural the way it happened and all the local guys wanting to come to our studio and do radio shows because they would listened and they'd heard people talking about it and they kind of knew we had a little sort of buzz going on and a nice kind of bunch of heads who all knew each other and got on and were into similar things you know so and then after that third studio is down here in, in the docks just off Fort William and it's kind of hidden but we like it and the docks basically clear out 5 p.m. everyone goes home <laughs> so we can bang out the music here all night and no one says anything so it's cool yeah yeah, it's a good spot. It must be really, really amazing to, to see people listening from, from like all around the world. Um, it is. It's a, it's an awesome thing. I mean, I suppose I've always kind of been like into being creative with whatever. Like I used to study theatre and write scripts and act um, and direct things. And that kind of spilled into music with DJing and then producing and all the rest of it and getting creative. So... I always did it for myself in terms of wanting to be creative, but I always said it was a bonus when people listened or checked your creativity out and they're like, wow, that's really nice. I want to support that or buy that or listen to you or watch that. So yeah, it's a nice feeling knowing that there's people who I've never met in some other nation tuned in and listening to what we're doing here in Belfast. Like, I think that's pretty cool. and. We're very grateful that people do want to tune in and have similar taste and like what we're doing and what we're saying and what we're representing. So yeah, it's it's satisfying. It's a nice feeling. Well, I guess if you if you're putting good music out there, you know, this, you're always going to get at least at least one person listening. Well, that's it. I mean, <laughs> to be fair, over the years, I'm assuming it's... you've got more than one person at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I mean, when it first kicked off, I think off the the name alone skank fm it's it's kind of in your face people will be like oh that's rude like a girl's a skank and all this it like why and it's like well actually like the way we checked it out is at the time in the uk scene like grime mcs and artists were saying like skank out as if like you know you go to a dance and you skank out you like rave sort of type thing and then yeah. there was the reggae interpretation of um like when a reggae guitarist will, will play the strings you'll you'll skank at a certain sort of time within the record okay um so there's different music terminologies to do with skank okay um and at the time me dj dk and k2 were just talking about skanking out in the club because <laughs> we were playing records and people does for skanking out so we were like let's call it skank fm so i think off that name alone i kind of hit the internet people might have stumbled across it typing in skank or something like that um <laughs> But on top of that, it kind of was just like a product, like just a bit of a name to question things, I think, in people's heads. Uh, and once you kind of say Skank FM, it kind of sticks in your head. Mm. And then before you know it, word spread, people go and check it out. And then, yeah, we've got a nice local following and local music heads that kind of be here and know about us. And yeah, it's it's crept further afield. The, parts of Europe and America and all the rest of it like I say so so you th yeah. do you think do you think it's easier now than than it was when you started to get word out about things like there's two different ways of looking at it I mean I'm 31 now when I first got into DJ I was like 14 15 um, so we didn't have the technology aka the laptops and computer setups to produce music the way we the way we can now hmm. so that's made a big impact on music production and shooting videos and getting your videos done and as well as that DJing and 
like technology has changed music in a, in a great deal even the way we buy and sell records nowadays um, so I mean our old school way was if we were running a club night it was like go to the printers get that flyer sorted with the most dodgiest graphics you've ever seen <laughs> in your life we were running uh, around town like literally throwing up posters on walls trying not to get done by police <laughs> and we were handing out flowers like in the shops in the all sorts of buildings across Belfast in the streets this, um, what, this would have been what like literally just at the millennium yeah I mean this was like sort of early 2000s when this was all kicking off um, and at the end of the day it was like I kind of stumbled into this just having a love for hip hop and hearing like Jay Z, Hard Knock Life Volume 2, Dr. Dre, 2001, DMX, like stuff like that I was listening to and it was amazing me. But then I came to that age where it was like you get your fake ID and you go into town and go into the club and I was like, wow, there's DJs in Belfast actually playing this stuff. <laughs> and then it was like, you got chatting to them before you knew it you're involved in a club night with promotion before I knew it I was on the mic and I was DJing at events and stuff like that um, so it was nice how I fell into it but that old school way was it was word of mouth and it was hardcore tactics of PR mm. nowadays it is different because I would have run around hand out flowers back in the day like say but you see me tonight before you came in to do this interview I'm sitting on my laptop putting up posts on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, email blasts, all the rest of it, saying to people across the globe hmm. who are now reachable because of the internet, hmm. tune in to Skank FM tonight and listen to DJ Nefo or whatever DJ we've got on each night, you know, so it's changed, like a lot of stuff has changed, but I think it's changed further as well because more people are accessible to this now. Mm. More people are accessible to making music because of technology. Um, you, you're here with a laptop recording this. Yeah. Well, I think it was Damien Damien Albarn made the whole Gorillaz the Fall album mm -hmm. on his iPad. Well, this is the thing, you know. I love that album. I think it's great. <laughs> well, I mean, this is the beauty of it. It's like, yeah, it's you can be so flexible with where you go and how you make your music nowadays because of technology, but also how you promote it and how far you can actually spread the word because of the internet and stuff like that. So, um, it, it is. It's. I mean, there's there's definitely parts about it that I love and I think it is great, but at the same time, there's something about that old school, like. I still buy vinyl, and if a really good album comes out, I'll still buy that record. Mm. Problem is nowadays it's twenty five pounds. Oh yeah. For an album, you know, if it's like a Kendrick Lamar or oh, Joey Badass, hurts the wallet. Like if it's new, doesn't it? <laughs> that's the thing. But that's something we really enjoyed about DJing in Belfast back in the day. Was um, you went in the in the town and you bought your records for like three four pound a single, mm. and you know, there was only maybe a couple of copies in the town anyway, so you and a handful of DJs only had them. Um, whereas nowadays, everything's downloaded and everyone can get any tune they want at any given time, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so that uniqueness of having individual records another DJ might not have is kind of lost in a sense nowadays. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of like it's great as well how technology and how change and all the rest of it has made everything just go a lot faster and mm. you know do you think it's easier to get lost in the crowd nowadays yeah. yes um, I mean like because because I've kind of been through a generation of club goers and a certain style of doing things you kind of had to be unique and individual back in the day to kind of stand out in a sense. Mm. Um, whereas nowadays, it's almost like, sometimes I feel like things are a bit flooded where if a style's hot, everyone kind of jumps on it. Mm. And then before you know it, you've got a load of records that feel the same um, and sound very similar. So it's hard to differentiate kind of styles, if you know what I mean. Um, but then on top of that, like I think 
DJs as well, because of collecting your records online and it being an MP3 nowadays and you playing it through Serato, through your laptop in the club, mm. a lot of DJs collect the same stuff and what's hot at the minute. Whereas, like I say, back in the day, it was like, if there's only X amount of those records copied and pressed, then yeah. there was only X amount of DJs had them. So that was different and unique. We well, lived in, you live, you used to live and die. But I say that like I know, as if I was there. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I get this, this like picture that, that, and this idea that, that DJs would have been like defined by their record collection. Totally. And like, I feel like that's not really there anymore. Like I love collecting and I love to have like a physical copy of something that I want to listen to. Yeah. Like even if it's a CD or a vinyl or whatever. Which is why I still buy a vinyl. Mm. But don't get me wrong, that vinyl has to be really good for me to buy it nowadays. Mm. Because, well, A, the price of it. But, mm. <laughs> but B, I only want to own great records and what I feel are great records in my collection do you know what I'm saying yeah this is just my opinion and my opinion on music is my opinion so great records to me I want to own them I want to have that hard copy and I want to play it in a CD player or I want to play it on vinyl the way I used to 15 years ago <laughs> that's just the way I grew up the way I was raised and the way it still fascinates me. Yeah, there really is. There's like, there's like a magic about going into the shop, and you find your your CD or your vinyl, and and you have that like you have to wait to get it home to then like open it up. You're like looking at the artwork. You yeah. get you get it out. You get yeah. the CD out or the you know the record out, and you get it in this player or under the the turntable, and you have that like little moment of anticipation yeah. just because you hit play you're like shit what's it gonna sound like <laughs> like it. what have I just bought um, and I feel like that magic's kind of lost by hitting download or just streaming it immediately like you lose that anticipation yeah, yeah. no like don't get me wrong I still go and download stuff like as a DJ I have to stay on top of the game especially in the clubs in Belfast you know or further afield it's like you do have to have those records that people want to hear. So yeah, you have to get those records. Are they worthy of vinyl vinyl? Some of them, yeah. Some of them, no. But they're there to download and it's quick access. So as a DJ, that's really handy. Mm. That's a plus side to this new era. But at the same time, for me collecting music, I feel like if you've got the hard co copy, there's a certain feeling of ownership to it. Mm. Whereas if I go and download the tune, it's just a file on a computer that yeah. can easily be deleted. Yeah, I always feel I'm like saying? I don't quite own it. That's the it's thing. Like <laughs> um, but I think, it, again, it's just actually being a fan of music and being a genuine record collector that if there's a piece that is worth collecting, then I, I feel like I have to collect it properly. But as well as that, uh, a gen like me making music and me trying to sell my music as well, like... I, I'm a proper fan so if an artist drops it I want to support that artist because I like what to do and mm. I believe in what to do and I can relate in some way so yeah they've made effort the way I make effort they've gone in the studio they've wrote something down they've produced it they've marketed it they've promoted it they do everything it's a lot of work <laughs> you know Yeah. and at, at the end of the day it's a lot of work just for people to cast an opinion on Mm. that's the thing nowadays it's like your record's either hot or it's not <laughs> and it can be just chatted about endlessly through social media do you know what I'm saying mm. so it's kind of like I like to support the artist I like to buy the, the record I like to just show that appreciation and I think if loads of people went and did that for for artists on the rise and all the rest of it those artists will propel further and get more inspiration and They'll, they'll know they have support in a way too so they'll keep going and keep yeah. making good music so yeah I think it's we're almost at like a I feel like there was this weird point where physical sales stopped mattering that much for artists mm -hmm. and it became more about either streams or and downloads or, or just how much they could make off of gigs mm -hmm. and that the actual music they were physically putting out there wasn't there to make them any money that was just like a vehicle for which to promote their tour yeah. and I feel like we've almost got past that stage now where people are using like Patreon, Subbable 
um, and bride funding techniques and like yeah. PayPal donations and things to I feel like yeah we've, we've, we've jumped across that chasm where people didn't want to pay for music mm-hmm. in, in like a similar way we're kind of jumping that chasm in information and, and journalism essentially where people mm-hmm. didn't want to pay for any I don't know, just like any news outlets that they wanted to read, like, yeah. um, like The Guardian or something like that. Well, it's like the death of the newspaper now because of the internet, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but then you get like s- people who are putting out things that people genuinely want to read yeah. and want to hear and they get they get like inundated with, yeah. with people wanting to contribute a little bit to like make their life easier. And I feel like we're, we're at that similar stage with, with artists where people will be willing... I think are, are willing to pay for quality again. Yeah, yeah. Do you know? I mean, we've gone like you've gone from like this mass everything is free and available, and then people suddenly realizing that that's maybe not what they want to do because they lost that connection with artists, and that that's kind of coming back. Like, what what do, what do you reckon? Like, I see what you're saying there, and I agree with you as well. But again, I think it's down to the way the music industry shifted in terms of the internet and technology and the way music is treated bought and dispersed to the world nowadays it's all online and it's all very we've become robots in a sense if you know what i mean Mm. but that said like you've mentioned artists are now like doing crowdfunding and projects where it's like well hang on like we'll get sponsorship and our fans will maybe contribute for us making this album Mm. and again like you were saying there about the artists going on tour to make their money because digital sales it's not the way that it used to be in terms of selling your hard copy. Mm. So the majority of large international artists make a lot of money by selling their tickets at gigs. Mm. So yeah, they've had to tour harder because again, the new technology has shifted that change in record sales. But that said, it depends on the artist and what situation they want to look at this internet and this new technology because 10 years ago for me to release a record I probably needed to sign to a record label and that record label to put money behind me and money behind press and records and promotion that Mm. you know for me to sell that record and there would have been a quota so they could at least break even on well that's it whereas nowadays it's like I don't need a record label like I can produce and make all the music myself I can put the music up online myself and sell it and control it 100% myself, mm. which means no ARs or no, you know, people behind the record label scenes are getting paid. Mm. Like they're not getting anything. I'm not signed to a label and I can take this revenue 100% myself. Yes, now with technology and the way crowdfunding online is happening. I could go and get sponsorship from someone in America who doesn't know me, but if I give them three free tunes and they believe in it and they go, that guy's pretty sweet, I'll maybe go and support that. Then that's just like, wow, like, couldn't do that 10 years ago. Yeah. And that's always like doing pen pal to some dude in America. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? So it's definitely like, you've got to kind of embrace, for me, you've got to definitely embrace the new style and move with it because there's constantly innovative and creative things happening in terms of how music is sold and how people buy it nowadays. Um, so if you if you take that under your wing and you kind of try and move with, you know, social media and YouTube and all these outlets and crowdfunding and just the internet in general and reaching fan bases and all the rest of it, then yeah, you'll pick up elements along the way that work for you and you find actually that's really beneficial and you'll think back, well, I couldn't do that 10 years ago. Mm. But at the same time, I think it's kind of also nice and there's still parts of the old school to bring along with us into the new school. Mm. And sometimes I feel like those old parts are just slowly being faded away. And recently, like we've seen a real, like, We've seen a rise in vinyl being bought again and vinyl being printed, which I really like to see, you know, and it was kind of hard. like quite the record year. collection out there. Yeah, well, that's just <laughs> years of buying vinyl, you know, but, um, but I mean, yeah, it's, it's like new school, old school, there's two different styles, but both should be embraced, I think, at the end of the day. And I think I'm kind of fortunate that I have embraced both. Hmm. 
because you were probably at the right age. You saw. Well, that's you it. Saw I kind of the... hit the sweet spot, if you know what I mean, where I was I was young enough to witness how people were going about their business, but as I grew older and still moved with music, I kind of witnessed the whole new side of it being entered in, and and now years later I've kind of sat back and realized well like things have really changed and I've really embraced some of it and I've really taken advantage of some of it um, but then there's also parts of it I just I'm just kind of like it's a bit naff or it's a bit watered down I don't really want to move with that trend if you yeah. know what I mean so yeah one one trend I just don't I'm not quite under I don't quite understand yet or maybe I just I don't get it. I just I don't understand like sometimes the the like over connection thing that people try and do where like stars will have like or like artists or whatever will have like loads and loads of like backstage photos and selfies and videos before they mm. go on stage and like yeah part of me feels like it ruins the mystery a little bit do you know what I mean like if, yeah. if like like if if John Lennon was snapchatting like what he was having for his breakfast then <laughs> or or you know pe- people didn't used to get like backstage photos or uh, or like video at, i don't know like rap concerts and stuff yeah. from like rappers and i feel like i mean I, it's it's a beautiful thing at the same time moments can now be captured so easily nowadays and and shared across the world you know and but the thing is as well there's like overkill of that too mm. I suppose it depends on the artist's personality. Some people just love themselves. And <laughs> they do. And they just love you could have said some people just love their fans and want to be in No, don't get me wrong. Some people love the, their fans, right? But some people do love themselves on social media. And it's almost like... No, it is. Like, it happened in Belfast where, like, these people these guys on like Geordie Shore and all were kind of getting booked for like coming to clubs mm. and I was thinking to myself like what what do they actually do that's really like amazing this crowd <laughs> tonight like they just be themselves and they get paid off of it and they make <laughs> money off of it and it's almost like they're social media popular sort of icons and don't get me wrong that must be great for them Mm. They just be themselves and take selfies and get paid and get booked and go on all these things. Yeah. But at the time, I was kind of like, like this dude just sits on TV. People love him. He comes to the club. He gets a wage. He gets free drink all night. But like, we're up here in the decks, really sweating it out. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? He's probably getting more than you. And he, well, they were getting more than us. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not hating them. I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying that's sweet. You sure you don't sound a little bit better now? No, like, <laughs> I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I do honestly say, like, if you could make money that way and it was so easy, get your money, right? 100%. But at the same time, the, I guess the point I'm trying to make now is with social media and selfies and Snapchat and Instagram and all the rest of it, it's kind of like there seems to be, like, a certain style of people nowadays that, like, can actually make a living off just posting about their day-to-day lives yeah. and can get paid off that. Do you know what I'm saying? Which, again, is like something you probably couldn't do 10 years ago. No, definitely have, not. Do you know? But this is the thing. It's like, it, like they almost say it's like Instagram kids or something like yeah. this. You know, these kids that just post like how cool their day is and not, what clothes they're wearing that are cool. And, and that's all well... Like that's sweet. Do you know what I'm saying? But well, I like to think them as heirs to Dan Bilzerian's fortune. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I don't know. Like it's it is mental when I think about it nowadays. Like how things have kind of shifted and stuff like that. But I mean, yeah, it's great. We have social media and all these platforms, and we can push our brand, and that's what we do at Skank FM but we're just not trying to be like really in people's faces being like check us out look at us mm. like you know we think we're the business it's like nah like here we are we make music we love music we love every, anyone who's involved with their music and likes being creative if you've got the same style come and chat come and holler come and listen to our station mm. come and hang out in the studio do you know what I'm saying so yeah. 
But I, I don't know. There's a thin line between that. Yeah. Well, I guess it's like you, you, got, you just got to make you got to make it so that you're not impossible to find if people want to find if people want to find you online. Well, that's it. And from there, I feel like that's the bare minimum that people should be doing if you're gonna if you want to try and do something where where you want to get people to come is just make yourself visible and discoverable and that's that's about as much as you can do that, that it's kind of what we did with the station you know from the word go like it was just kind of word of mouth there was flyers printed they were handed out in club nights we were doing the word spread a bit people naturally find us online we started off facebook people started to join but we never really like went and tagged people like Unless it was like a great show or someone like we knew thought they they really like that. I know they're into that. Let's tag them in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we never really like hit social media and like paid for promotion or we never like were mad into like every single day clicking like coming like us, coming like us or inviting pages. It was just like, nah, just let it be, let it spread. The the ones who like you say. If they need to know about it, they can find us online, yeah. and that's that's kind of how our followers have just kind of snowballed over the past little years, and it's, it's happened really naturally and quite nicely, mm. which we kind of like. Uh, and again, like I say, it's like me personally, yeah, I like to post up my stuff online. It's a good source of promotion, um, but at the same time, it's like I'm not trying to like be in people's face with it. Do you know what I'm saying? It's, mm. So like I'd rather let them like it for themselves or hate it for themselves and choose whether they want to come along for the ride or whether you know they don't want to come along for the yeah. ride. Yeah. So. Well, I feel like and I feel like regardless of the amount of money someone could pump into like ads and social media, mm. um, that a word of mouth recommendation is still the most powerful thing. It do you is. know what I mean? If someone says to you, it's like, oh, I was listening to this great set by whatever DJ on Skank FM, and you go, yeah. Skank FM, who's that? Like, yeah. And write it down, or you'd remember the name. And like, I still think that's even even more so than someone sends you a Facebook message. Unless you read it there and then, open the link and listen. Like, you, I still think that someone telling you in person. Well, again, that's, that's kind of like how you're here now. It's <laughs> like, true, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was totally word of mouth through Jasper doing a show here and coming through to the studio yeah. that you were like oh what is that sweet let me check that out and now you're like down here doing an interview yeah. word of mouth is strong and again it's part of the old school I think it worked back in the day and it kind of still works now you yeah. know? and still to a certain degree like part of my promotional tactics for me releasing music is word of mouth like I'll literally from some DJ I've done sets with in England and go here I'm dropping a new record this weekend it's good chatting to you and stuff like that like I'm going to send you a link into your email account later on you mm. know, and they'll be like sweet that's cheers I'll check that out and then before you know it you've got a little bit of radio play in England and it's kind of that old school pick up the phone and do it yourself and sometimes as well nowadays it's like so easy just to go online and send 4,000 people the exact same message my album's dropped today yeah there's no personal touch there if you know what I mean so I still use that old school tactic of word of mouth but at the same time try to embrace the new school as well with spreading word quickly and yeah through the internet too you know a friend of mine has a theory that if you send someone a letter mm -hmm. they are far more likely to remember you than an email now the, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I suppose that definitely would because it's so unheard of now. <laughs> so they'll remember it, you know. And there was even like a, a funny story I heard about some, uh, it's like a producer or like some artist. Um, they were trying to promote the record, and I thought, how can I get someone to listen to this? Like, you know, Radio One or something like that. So mm. they ended up boxing up a hi-fi <laughs> with their CD in it. And literally mailed it to Annie Mac. <laughs> she had opened this box up, thinking, "What's in this?" And there's a stereo plugged it in, played the track, and was like, "That's amazing! I'm gonna drop that on the show." So things like that work. Do you know what I'm saying? But nowadays, you you do you you've got to kind of be creative, 
uh, in what way you approach and what way you promote your music um, mm. because there's so many artists out there and there's so many other people doing the exact same thing as you nowadays that you've kind of got to find a way of sticking out, you know? Yeah, and I think a lot of that as well can come down to money. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> if you've got money, you can get places in this life, do you know what I'm saying? And yeah. The thing is with this music industry as well, it's like there's no real set rules or set like ways of doing things. No, and it's, those set rules are constantly being reinvented and broken and that's rewritten. It. And, that's yeah. it. That's why it's like a mad journey from what we witnessed back in the day to now. And it's seen so many different ways of people going about A, making their music, how music's played how music's promoted, like there's so many different aspects that have constantly changed. And even nowadays you can go online and you'll get like music gurus who will like help you sell your music. And like, don't get me wrong, I've like subscribed to one or two of them and stuff like that in the top general sense. Um, but they'll literally for a fee send you pages and pages of how to make it in the music industry <laughs> with all different techniques and tips that they've used that might have worked for them that might work for you mm. and again people can make a career out of that nowadays whereas you know it was kind of harder to do back in the days you would have had to authorize a book mm. whereas nowadays with technology guys are like subscribe my youtube yeah. channel and you're listening i'll show you how to make it in the music industry so <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I always feel like those things are general guidelines and then you sort of have to do your own thing on top of it. You do, you do. Like, I mean, I kind of, like, I've been there and done sets where I've been playing music that I'm not really into and I've been doing it for the money. Mm. I have not really taken enjoyment out of it and in a sense that's me selling out 100%. Um, but yeah, you gotta get your money sometimes, do you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I think you're always gonna get more enjoyment when you're actually doing something you want to do nowadays. Which is what we're trying to allow people to do down here. Be themselves, make the music they want to make. We're not gonna stand over anyone and say, yeah, it's like everyone's got their opinions at the end of the day. Do you know what I'm saying? So not everyone's gonna follow at times. Yeah. But you just gotta accept that too. But like I say, change in the music industries, it's just inevitable. It's, it's happening every day and you gotta adapt with it, you know, so. Any predictions? What's what's like, do you, any for like, I don't know, five years time, what do you see? Oh, you just don't you... know, it just changes <laughs> that quick. It honestly does. Um, but I mean, I, I just kind of do this because I love it, to be honest with you. I don't think I can walk away from it at this stage. So predictions for me in the studio, I'm probably still going to be doing it in five, <laughs> five years. The studio is still probably going to be running. In terms of the music industry in five years, there's just going to be far more craziness. You think so? Craziness in what way? Well, I mean, for me nowadays, because more people we've talked about the access to the internet and the access and how easy it is to make music therefore more people are doing it therefore mm -hmm. there's more styles coming out therefore genres are branching out into sub-genres so there's going to be more genres that appear i think over the next load of years there's going to be different styles within those genres and i think like nowadays because everything's so flooded you're just going to find more crazy stuff that help, <laughs> that help people stand out more different things, you know, like crazy hairdos and mad outfits. And do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, it's, it's you happening got, nowadays. People, and people, it's, people got to find a way to that's it, yeah. stick out. That's it. <coughs> but, but I think at the same time, you're always going to have those, those people who are just like, in the genuinely good music and avoid the craziness and you know so there's I don't know there's almost like two different sides to music for me like there's there's good and there's bad <laughs> but it's down to opinion at the end of the day so yeah. do you see like a, a ceiling on how big Skank FM can get like do you think have you hit one or like ended up breaking through it or um, what, what, like what do you think that there's like a 
a finite number of people you can reach you know like uh, I think that could just go on forever and ever and ever so long as the station's actually running and the studio's here making music and bringing people into it it could literally go on forever and ever and ever and nowadays I'm finding there's more interest in the studio not just because it's more accessible through online and all the rest of it but because we're supporting more people and we're playing more local music therefore they're getting more heads to tune in and listen to their tracks being played and it just keeps snowballing but as well as that nowadays in Northern Ireland, Ireland, UK, worldwide people have got more access to making music so more music is being made so so long as there's more music being made we're going to be playing it sort of type thing so so long as the station's here we're playing local stuff supporting it we're playing stuff from across the seas it's just going to keep going and going and going and like from we started to now we've seen djs come and go you know guys do shows with us some left by choice others got told to leave others are here for the long run we've seen it all do you know what i'm saying so to me it's just like yeah whatever like i'm still gonna be here making music and so long as i'm still here making music that radio station is still gonna be going mm. so i guess it's just so long as we keep the ball rolling people are just gonna keep coming through the door and more <laughs> shows are gonna happen and more artists are going to be here and stuff like that so can't really argue with that (laughs) yeah no it's great but like I say it's just with the way things have shifted over the past 30 years just word of mouth you know it does travel through Belfast and further afield but also through the internet but it's just really nice knowing that there's more people in the city starting to make music and starting to get into it and starting to push it themselves and starting to realize like we did there's so many different aspects <clears throat> that you could choose nowadays yeah and they're so accessible so why not do it and again that's what we've done here that's what i do with my own music personally and that's what i like seeing uh other people do and i guess i can kind of relate myself because i've kind of been there and done that mm. so with a lot of local rap artists and a lot of local producers and stuff in a way i kind of see myself in them you know like especially for someone who's maybe like 19 20 nowadays coming up out of belfast writing raps and all the rest of it Mm. recording them i know what it takes to write that rap and what effort it takes to make that beat and studio session and all the rest of it Mm. so i kind of like I'll see your effort. I want to support that. Whereas back in the day, me and DJ DK and K2 and a couple other heads in the city didn't really have that. You know, we would make music and go to a local radio station to be like, Belfast rap? I'm not playing that. Do you know, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Whereas nowadays, because we can do this and it's more easier for us to do than what it's ever been. It's like, let's do it, but on top of that, let's bring other people along with us and give them an opportunity that we necessarily did not have back in the day. So it's kind of nice in that sense too. Yeah, it's nice to see lots of, like obviously there was yeah, Belfast Underground Radio as well. Do we not want to, do you not want to talk about them? Are they your no, competition? I, no, are they, no, are they, no. Is, is, don't give them any, any publicity. No, <laughs> like I love, I love Belfast Underground Radio. Um, I genuinely do. And, um, like I know the guys over there likewise they were in the scene like back in the day when I was Mm. you know um, Bobby Murray and stuff like that over there like they're legends that effectively it's it's just because like we're an online radio station Mm. and we kind of did it first people were kind of coming to me and being like oh Daz are you raging like underground style (laughs) and I was like no like we're doing this because we can like let them do it because they can too Mm. do you know what i'm saying and they they kind of took it a step further we were like kind of doing like a live uh youtube broadcast like maybe once every two or three months and having a party down here Mm. whereas they were like let's do a live video broadcast every time yeah do you know what i'm saying 
And I, I was like, resp- respect, like, you know, I know what it takes again to kind of do those things. Mm. And they've, they've done it in a way that it's, it's real nice. Like, they've got these camera angles and they've got a nice studio set up. Oh, yeah, it's really nice. All oh, their sound systems that's are fucking it. beautiful. And again, I did, I did a couple of sets for them, <laughs> yeah. like, on like a just, I was literally when they were just starting, just lugging half my CD collection down to the station yeah. and just playing like yeah. loads of really obscure <laughs> B sides from like albums that I love. Yeah. <laughs> um, just for to fill some time out in the morning for them. No, I, I, lo- I love it down there. And like I've been down there as a guest on a couple of radio shows with a few other DJs and you know I'm, I'm always welcomed and it's nice but as well as that I just love what they're doing they're doing essentially what we're doing they're supporting local music local artists local DJs they're getting international DJs in who are passing through Belfast doing sets and all the rest of it they're collaborating all they're really doing is just giving more positive vibes to the whole music scene in Belfast. Mm. And to be honest with you, if three, four, five, whatever amount more radio stations like that started up in Belfast, I think effectively it would be great for the whole music scene. Oh yeah. You know? But max respect to the dudes down there because they've gone about their business in a really really nice way and I really admire the way they've they've started up what they've started. Um mm. And again, I kind of know what it takes to start up a station, like to get people involved. Never mind like things other people don't think about, like covering the bills mm. and insurance and internet and equipment, d- the equipment and, yeah, and getting the, getting the streams mind, just, right, making sure everything. That's yeah. it, you know. Even just sitting online and chatting to people and organizing set times and all that. Like it's it's a it's a full on job, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm glad like that are doing it because they push it to a level where I couldn't personally push it, you know, um, and that's part to, partly to do with my time, like I work a nine to five, you know, um, so I'm down here most evenings pushing it, but the way they're doing it is just relentlessly, here's a show, here's a new DJ, here's a new video stream, and it's like, just keep doing it, keep pushing it, you know, so. Yeah, have you ever, have you considered going like, 24 7 stream like they do or well we do stream 24 7 um but like it's a playlist you know and our playlist is hand selected like by all the djs and all the djs over the past years like we've always said to them if there's tunes that you feel people need to listen to then bring them down the studio and put them in our playlist and let that run you know but most evenings we've got djs in doing the live shows um and don't get me wrong, like if I if I could change this into my full time job, then I probably would. But at the same time, it's like <laughs> I've got a mortgage nowadays, <laughs> I've got the studio rent to pay for and sort out and all the rest of it, you know, and like life life's just kind of a little bit of a stretch for me in that terms, but at the same time it's like I'm kind of satisfied in the amount of time I do put in down here and stuff like that, you know. Do you see it as ever becoming something you could do full-time? Well, I mean, I have kind of been at a stage in my life where music was full-time. I was DJing maybe six nights a week and doing live shows and festivals and warm-up gigs. And I was mainly making my income through, through live gigs whether it was a, as an MC or a DJ um, or running events and promoting my own nights and stuff like that but it's bags and bags of effort <laughs> um, on top of that there's no guarantees your night can be a success or it can be a complete flop mm. clubs close you're out of work there's no written documents saying you're contracted here or anything like that so and as well as that, I was actually just doing sets to make money, mm. you know, to hold down rent or whatever it was. Um, and I found myself just doing sets for the money sometimes rather than the love of music in terms of what I was really into and what I enjoy playing. Mm. So like I was maybe going and doing a gig where I had to play like David Guetta or something like that. Now don't get me wrong, like people love David Guetta and that's all good, like go ahead, love him. <laughs> but my personal choice of music is not you David Guetta. I'd you, rather you play don't some be playing. Well I'd rather play some like Nas or Philmatic or something or like old school Biggie or Big Daddy Kane or something. 
and it was kind of like I was spinning all these records in the club and it was just like going through the same routine and yeah I was making the money but at the same time like my heart really wasn't in it mm. but at the same time the guarantee of that money wasn't there and like I was moving to a stage in my life where it was like I want a house like that I want to own and I want to be able to have a set wage mm. and I want to be able to start thinking about a pension and I want to do you know what I'm saying like starting to grow up sort of type stuff yeah so I was like maybe I need to hit that nine to five and get get my work on that way and fair I do that you know and I've kind of got the things I need in life but I've got job security behind me um, and I guess because of that my music and the attitude of music has shifted back to well I don't rely on music for an income mm. therefore the income that I do make off my music is a bonus now which is sweet but on top of that I'm actually finding myself being involved in stuff I genuinely want to be involved in mm. because I don't I don't need to go and I, uh, I need that like two three hundred pounds for that DJ set now so I'll just go down there and play Katy Perry <laughs> whereas nowadays it's like nah I've got my bills covered like you know I'm not playing Katy Perry for you I'd rather go down to this club and get paid less and play Big L or <laughs> Big Pun or some like this hip hop or something like that you know yeah. so I feel like I don't know Part of me feels like that there's this, not attitude, but like feeling amongst some DJs, and maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but that they feel that, and maybe it's completely legitimate that they feel this, they feel like constrained to what people expect to hear. And that if, if yeah. I, I, and I don't know, I don't know who the onus falls upon to like, want something different whether it's the promoters the djs to demand it or the audience to like go with it if people do start playing something that's a bit different i suppose it depends what kind of music scene you roll in as well like that 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 question there it's it's i agree with you like because everything's so accessible and so like played out in social media it's easy to see a trend and for people to fall into that trend and follow it straight away but back in the day, again, you didn't have a laptop to DJ. So nowadays I get people come up to the DJ box and go, have you got such and such, that song? And I go, no. And they go, just download it on your laptop there and play it. <laughs> Whereas back in the day... <laughs> you legitimately could say, no, I don't have it. Well, yeah, back, <laughs> in, the, back, back in the day, the thing is, if, if you went to a DJ set, your 100% trust was in that DJ mm. because that DJ only had what records he had. That was that. He couldn't run to the record sh the store during a set and pick up the brand new records you want. You couldn't, do you know what I'm saying? There was only a certain amount of stuff that you could even get your hands on anyway. So mm. it was like, because there was no instant access to music it was like people rolled to the club and just let the dj do his thing and mm. just let their trust in that dj to rock it and that was kind of beautiful whereas nowadays people are like hear that like tunes like really hot at the minute like you know you sticking that on and they just expect you to have it because two taps on their phone they've got it so why shouldn't you have it yeah you know what i'm saying so that perspective has changed, um, but at the same time, like there's house nights in Belfast where like the DJs are coming through and they're they're spinning vinyl and they're spinning CDs and stuff, and the crowd's just kind of letting them do their thing, mm. and they're there because they know that DJ's dope, and so they just let that DJ do their thing. Mm. Whereas you go to some commercial clubs nowadays, and it might be like just Hindus in or whatever, and like just the average punter who listens to Radio 1. They want to hear the top 10. Like. They want to hear the top 10. <laughs> it's simple as that, you know? So in a sense, it depends what kind of music you listen to and what club mm. you go to. But as well as that, I suppose it's also 
the shift in iPads, phones, all the rest of it. I um, guess it's the curse, curse of the aux cord. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People get too used to yeah. being like, oh, stick this tune on, here's my phone, stick it in. Well, that's it, you know, and I, I do, I get that all the time. Like, I'll just download it, or just hear a plug in my phone and play it, and it's like, I'm not even a DJ set, like, like <laughs> plugging in your phone to play your record. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you just go straight up too, you know. But, uh, Oh, man, there's a shift in everything in music and the way it operates nowadays so in every city and every single way you know it's at the end of the day like it's all just opinion really what you're into if you believe in it you do it you know if that person believes in that tune or wants to hear that record let them don't hate them just be like sweet that's your style like you do yours i'll do mine and, Let's just be, you know. I think we could all do with a little bit more more of that in our lives. <laughs> uh, but again, like social media and stuff, it just makes like so everything so accessible, like just for opinions as well. Mm. You know, like people come online and just slate you straight away, you know. Other people come on love you, other people but the thing is it's like they can do it with a couple of taps of a button hmm. and that's people some people are just like yeah I'll just state my opinion here do you know what I'm saying and <laughs> other people keep them, their opinions to themselves but that's life in general too hmm. but social media all the rest of it it's, it's a game changer like for this whole music scene it definitely is there's no doubt about it I guess we'll see what see what happens yeah you never know all well, 10 years time all radio sets might be done on Snapchat and <laughs> Instagram live and, well, and then that's it you just obviously <laughs> you just don't know but again there's beautiful sides to it there's not so beautiful sides to it you know but suppose at the end of the day like if you're involved in music I would just say do it for yourself personally do it for your own enjoyment listen to it for your own enjoyment all the rest of it do it for you personally because that's when you'll kind of get most from it, you know, and that's when you'll enjoy it most, whether you're listening or whether you're making it. Just whatever your style is, roll with it <laughs> and don't care what other people think. If what? it makes you happy, that's the main thing, you know. Boys to live by. <laughs> so, so where well, can I wouldn't quote it or yeah, anything yeah. like that. Just oh, no, no, get that on someone, <laughs> get that on your wall, man. <laughs> um, so, yeah, where, well, just to, just to finish up then, where can people find all your stuff where can people listen to skank fm well skank fm strictly online so it's skankfm.com or .co.uk um you got both yeah i uh, got to like <laughs> <laughs> uh and then we've got at skank fm on facebook on instagram on twitter all the rest of it um you can subscribe on the website and stuff drop us emails there send us tracks if you're not becoming an artist uh, my own music personally, my website is dazofficial.com, uh, at Daz Belfast on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Um, but yeah, with my own music, like I dropped a new album, start of the year, it was like April, uh, The Zone with a producer called Bennis. Uh, and then about three weeks ago, I dropped a new album, Rich and Faith. Um, so it's on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, all the rest of it and stuff like that. Um, loads of different producers on it from like France and Poland and London, America, some local producers, local vocalists, some rap artists from like Minneapolis, uh, California, um, London. And then at the minute, just working on a new album myself with a local producer called The One. And then we got Big Twins on that from Queens. He rolled with like Mob Deep and stuff like that. Um, okay. And he's been on tour with like 50 Cent and stuff like that. So it's nice Fair. to have him on our track. Yeah. And then we have a couple of UK MCs coming across here end of the month. A uh, guy who's been involved with UK hip hop for about 15, 20 years now. Um, another guy who's co-produced with Dizzy Rascal and stuff like that. So he's coming over to feature on on tracks and then other than that man just really trying to push local hip-hop on my own radio show um there's so many great artists and djs like 
just trying to show love to all the ones like I grew up listening to. Hmm. Um, all the ones who kind of inspired me to get into the music scene in Belfast, like DJ DK, K2, Nick Muska, Chris Call, O1, Slim Jim, Dirty Harry, like too many to mention sort of type thing. There's a lot of talented people out there. There is, and then as well as that, obviously, as you can see, just supporting the next sort of generation ahead, there's DJ Nafo. 19, 20 years old doing his thing at Skank FM and Jasper. Nice and that's it. <laughs> and then, like I say, man, the, the, like see the local rap music scene at the minute, which I'm heavily involved in, it's booming. You know, like last night on my radio show, I had like, what, three or four artists who I've never heard before, never played before, coming up out of the city, sending me music. And it's like, that's sweet. I'm supporting that. Fair. Never mind all the other local heads I've supported for years, like Steve Locke and disgrace and Wicked and Android and I don't know there's too many to mention <laughs> like the list goes on Juma Dan McGill like so many Sketch 9 Fitzy yeah just great artists out there so might as well support them so that's where we're at and that's what we're gonna be doing over the foreseeable future down here yeah we can put all the links to all your stuff in the description yeah cool and yeah so yeah thanks very much for uh for chatting to me not a problem it was it was awesome yeah. just uh yeah hopefully it didn't melt your head too much like no man i had fun just babbled on really didn't it yeah <laughs> Thanks very much for listening. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget you can like and subscribe to us on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to tell your friends about the show so that everyone can enjoy this fantastic podcast. (laughs) Until next time, thanks for listening.